Was the total solar eclipse a psyop, a hoax, a staged event? Was it Nibiru that went in front of the sun? Was it a giant mothership? Probably not. It was most likely the moon. I've seen hundreds of posts, multiple videos saying the entire thing was a psyop, it was fake, it was a hoax, it wasn't real. But I've also seen tons of people say that space isn't real and that we're actually living inside of a Petri dish, which living inside of a Petri dish might make sense. But with that said, I do want to share with you an article that came out in 1932, August 14th, the New York Times, specifically showing that there will be another eclipse August 21st, 2017. And this was about 90 years ago, and they knew about it then. Did our founding fathers also know about the future eclipses? I think yes, and I'll tell you why. Look at the Oregon Incorporation of the U.S., the 33rd state. Look at the end of this eclipse at the 33rd degree north parallel in South Carolina. I think there's many synchronicities that link up as a foretelling or knowledge beforehand. Also, if you go back to ancient Mesopotamia, we do know that the Sumerians were given knowledge, map, and information about the stars and the planets that they couldn't see from a civilization previous to them. Whether or not it was the Anunnaki that came from the stars or the heavens, or a race previous to them, like the Arata people that built Gobekli Tepe, that is still under debate. I will tell you this, though. I find it fascinating if you look at the synchronicities from thousands of years ago, if you read these ancient cuneiform tablets and what's going on today. I also feel that many of these tablets were put together by people that had specific agendas and worked for specific people as well. Particular scribes got paid to say something in particular. Now, it could be a 7,000-year-old National Geographic. It could be a 7,000-year-old National Enquirer. The more information we can put together, the more dots that we can connect, the more alignments that we can make, the more knowledge we will have. And I think that if we know what happens in the heavens with the stars, the more knowledge we're going to have about what goes on down here on Earth, as above, so below. Quantum physics, quantum entanglement, everything being connected at the primordial level. I met some amazing people, amazing people out there in Smith's Ferry, Idaho. I will tell you this, when I started the trip driving through northern Utah then hitting Idaho, I thought that they were blasting the sky so I would be able to see them because they were completely silver haze. And I looked at the the weather reports said blue skies, sunny weather. Well, I thought, hey, man, maybe they're, they're busting out just a ton of chemtrails to block the skies for this eclipse. But most likely, the majority of that silver haze is from forest fires, places like Oregon and other parts of the country that are the wind patterns are bringing the, the silver haze into Idaho, different parts of Idaho, because it did clear up nicely. Now, I do think that there are chemtrails also that affect that a little bit, but I did just want to clarify that. Idaho is one of the most amazing states I've been to. I traveled that state extensively through a bunch of back roads recently. Amazing people, kind vibes that give you the shoes off their feet if you needed them to get home. They're that kind of people. Wonderful people. And I'll tell you this, the, the state is absolutely gorgeous. I, travel, I traveled hundreds of miles through these back roads because when the, the eclipse was over, there was a one-lane road from Smith's Ferry to Boise. And it took me two hours to travel about 15 miles. I was, well, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 20 miles or so. But we turned off in this place called Burley out there in Idaho. We followed that road east a bit, and there was this dirt road that took us through several small towns. It took us through several apexes of mountains. We were at least 10,000 feet up, probably even higher, probably close to 11,000 plus elevation. And just fantastic. We made it back and then checked in. I had an opportunity to meet the people that do the, the Watcher programs. I might be speaking at a couple events that they have coming up. Very good people. Now, I, I don't have the same religious beliefs as many people that I talk to at this event, but that doesn't mean I don't have the utmost respect for them and, and care deeply about them as people. If we all thought the same way, wouldn't it be a boring world anyway? Wouldn't that mean that we were already assimilated by the Borg? What are your intentions? What are your values? Who are you as a person? Are you throwing boulders in a glass house? A lot of people seem to do that. And I'll tell you, the vibes that I got from Paul were top-notch. The vibes that I got from Scotty Clark, top-notch. Many people out there, there were people out there that came from Costa Rica. Very nice people. One guy actually, he said he's been watching my show for a while. He said he used to think I was crazy. Now he knows I'm just looking for the truth. And just such kind vibes. I mean, he was... He was giving me his personal testimony about how he believes in the Christ and Jesus as the Savior. And I thought it was awesome. Very, very good people out there. So for all of the haters out there on either side of the coin, let's just get rid of that. Could you imagine the difference we could make if we worked together? 
even if we had different religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs, if we could work together and help others, wouldn't that get rid of a lot of the crap that's out there today? Now, I'm also going to share some images with you guys that were taken by um, some really nice people that I met that came down from Alberta. So I'd like to personally thank you guys as well for taking these images and sharing them with me so that I can share them with the world. Somebody said that, hey, why are you showing mainstream media images of the eclipse? These aren't mainstream images. These were actually taken from somebody at the Smith's Ferry location. And once again, thank you very much. I'm going to share that with you guys now. Okay, this was my favorite part of the eclipse right here. When, they sh when, when, the, when it became completely dark, I still had my glasses on, and Scotty was like, hey, take off your glasses. And I took off my glasses, and this is what I saw. Before that, I had an opportunity to look at the sun turn into the moon, or what looked like the moon, just a little sliver. I'll share a few pictures with you here. And then it went the other way, which is really cool. And there's just so many people out there that are saying that they think that this was a, you know, they think that this was just a hoax. They think it was a sun simulator. Something went in front of the sun simulator. It was some type of, new, you know, alternative planet or something like that. Well, let me ask you this. The moon is the perfect size and the sun is the perfect size and where they're aligned to get a solar eclipse. So if another planet blocked the sun, what would its dimensions have to be? How far away from the earth and the sun would it have to be? Is this just a giant hologram? I don't think so. When you watch it and you see it, especially the total solar eclipse, when you're in the perfect path, it makes you realize, at least in my, it made me realize, and I've, and I've thought about this many times before, and when I was 19 years old, I had visions of this. The atoms that have protons and neutrons and electrons that oscillate in specific frequencies, that go in orbits, etc. It seems like the moons and the planets and the stars all do the same thing, just at a different level. And even size is perspective, is an illusion. If space is infinite, how is anything larger than the other in, infin in infinity? Whatever you feel about the solar eclipse and religion and prophecy and spiritual enlightenment, Does it help you to hurt others? Is that why you do it? And I'm, I'm asking the people genuinely, those out there that attack others' beliefs because they don't have the same that you do. Do you think that by attacking them, that makes you a better person? Does that give you a better chance to go to heaven? Or is that just a way of you to project your anger towards somebody's different beliefs? Because maybe you're questioning your own. I'll be heading back here shortly to the home base in Texas. I'm not really excited to go back to Texas, but hey, I've got my studio out there. I'm missing my paintings and I'm missing the vibes. Also, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a lot more stuff on some of the ancient texts. I know we've been taking a little bit of time off on that and some people have been asking me to get back into that. I'm also going to share with you as much as I can on anything that comes to the surface and is not shared in the mainstream media. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Be excellent to each other. Be kind to each other and be the change you want to see.